The question hanging over markets this week is, is the US going back into recession? Over the last two months, we've seen uh, increasingly poor data coming out of the US, and in particular this week, we've seen some quite quite startling numbers that have come in way below expectations. So I want to just present a, a few charts that really summarise what has been going on in the last couple of weeks and just assess whether or not this looks like the beginnings of a, either a slowdown or a move back into recession for the US. Let's start here with the first chart, which is the Manufacturing PMI survey. Um, this is a survey that does uh, ask the question of manufacturers how they're feeling about confidence. And this was a number that we can see here came in at 53.5 this week um, against a consensus estimate that was somewhere around the 58 um, level. Um, that, that number did obviously shock to the downside. And if we then just look at a series of charts, it just builds a trend of deteriorating data. This, for example, is the ADP report, National Employment Report, that came out, uh, came out this week. And again, you can see a very sharp deterioration, particularly against uh, expectations. Uh, we're talking um, ahead of what is probably the most crucial number in the US. This is the non-farm payroll number. Now, this chart has been looking quite healthy. Um, we, we're looking here at the low point of the recession, um, around about sort of June. Uh, 2008 through to the early 2009. You can see here this is a negative number, so this is losing jobs. This huge rally got uh, uh, took, took the chart back up into a very much a positive number of over 400. This peaked uh, about sort of um, May of last year, and since then we've been sort of in this sort of range of adding 150 to 200,000 jobs. So this number is due. Um, uh, later today, and of course, what we'll see is that the consensus forecast is around about 150 to 170. But on the back of that poor ADP number, there is fear in the market that it could come in below that. So that is going to be an eagerly watched piece of um, piece of data. But let's just look at some of the other the other um, uh, surveys that have come out recently, just to get a sense of this deterioration. Here we have again another manufacturing survey from the Richmond that has come in um, uh, but below expectations. Let's also turn to consumer confidence with this chart, and again, not a uh, deteriorating picture yet, but clearly one that uh, seems to have peaked out, and uh, consumer confidence does seem to be um, under some pressure. And I think probably the chart for me that is the most interesting and tries to sort of summarise all of the, the data points that we've seen recently um, against consensus, and I think this, this is a truly startling chart, it's the Citigroup Economic Surprise Index, and you can see here from March, uh, just in the last two to three months, how far economic numbers in the US have, have come in below consensus forecast by economists. It just tells you that economists are at the moment too bullish as to what is going on co um, compared to the reality in the US economy. So that is a chart that um, really is in a very severe downtrend. Now what is this doing to financial markets? I think the first chart that I will pull up is the uh, yield that is on the 10-year Treasury, um, because I think this is the, the, the sort of heartbeat of uh, feeling about the US economy. It is of clearly the most liquid market. And yields on US Treasuries have moved down from that uh, March high point of 3.6% to below 3%, uh, coming in at 2.9% here. Now, the most surprising feature about this is, is A, the move, um, particularly as we're coming towards the end of QET, QE2 in, in the US. So there has been a feeling that as soon as the government stood away from this market as, as the principal buyer, that actually yields would rise, um, particularly, again, in light of inflation that is beginning to rise um, around the world. So the fact that this has actually been moving lower um, uh, suggests that, uh, that these economic numbers that are coming out in the US are deteriorating and any, any thoughts that, um, that, that uh, interest rates will need to rise to curtail sort of stronger growth and inflation is being put very much on the back on the back benches at the moment. So again, uh, a, a certainly a chart to be watching over the course of the next few weeks. Now what do we do with equities? Well I think one sector 
that um, we need to watch quite carefully in light of any, any thoughts of a, a deteriorating picture um, is the commodity sector. Um, and again, commodities do weigh quite heavily on the London FTSE 100 index, given the larger exposure we do have to the sector. Now, Rio Tinto shares um, have peaked here, uh, again, sort of that sort of March-April period. Subsequently, it has been in a bit of a downturn. Um, it's not selling off too markedly at the moment, but clearly if there are thoughts that the US economy is slowing down, then we do need to keep an eye on commodity prices as to whether that they will come under some pressure. It's not happening yet, but I think a more cautious stance in the, in the near term may be required. The other sector that clearly requires um, uh, a, a better economy is the banking sector. And I think it is disturbing to continue the look at Lloyd's TSB shares, which are really now trading at a low, um, very much a low last seen um, at the sort of height of the crisis a few years back now. Um, back down to sort of 48, below that 50 pence level. We've been commenting upon Lloyds as, for a while as a little bit of a benchmark um, uh, bank, and as I say, seeing it on the low is indicating that a few of those more sensitive uh, sectors, such as commodities and, and in particular banking, are coming under pressure. So it's aligning with this economic data that we are seeing at the moment. To end on a more cheerful note, though, I um, wanted to highlight Serco. Um, Serco is a FTSE 100 company. We do have a note out on Serco. It's been one, one of our core holdings and they've had a good week. Um, Serco is an outsourcing group. It is benefiting from the move by private organisations, local governments and central governments to reducing costs and engaging more with the private sector. Serco announced uh, a decent sized acquisition this week and the share price has responded favourably. So that's against a weak trend that there are still stocks that are performing well on both an absolute and relative performance.